Welcome back for a Vlogtober day 26. Today we are talking about an iconic symbol of witches and particularly witches at Samhain and that is the cauldron. This is one of my cauldrons here. It is cast iron. It's got a lid. It has a handle to hang from and I love the size of this one for workings on my altar. I think it's perfect. So I just wanted to have a fun chat about cauldrons today and some things that you can do with them. Most people just use them for burning and burning incense, but there are so many more uses. And while it is by no means a necessary tool, it is one that I regularly use in my practice and really enjoy. If you follow a, a particular pantheon and work with gods and goddesses, you probably have a goddess in your pantheon that is associated with the cauldron and is always pictured with the cauldron because it is a very feminine symbol and it is thought to be a symbol of the womb. So it is often associated with goddesses that are associated with fertility or the hearth and the cauldron itself can be particularly useful for amplification and transformation energy. Like I said, the most common use for it is fire associated. So a lot of times it is used as a fire pit, whether that is placing a candle inside, maybe some sulfur incense on the bottom, placing a candle on top of it and using that as the flame, using a charcoal disc and burning incense on top of that. There are also incense cones and you can just use a stick incense and lean it against the side of your cauldron. I don't particularly burn incense, but I do always use my cauldron for that fire magic. I'm always lighting a tea light in there and using it to burn things. It's a great place to burn petitions, so if you are writing something down and writing down your intention, what it is that you want to manifest, you can then burn that in the cauldron to send that out into the universe and that burning is the activation of the spell. And that also makes it a great place to burn offerings. So if you have any ancestors or deities that you work with, you can burn incense or herbs in there as the offering to them. And it can be used as just an offering space in general. You don't have to burn anything in it at all. You don't have to go with the fire element. You can just place a cauldron on your altar and that is is where you put your offerings for your ancestors or for your deities so you can place crystals in there, food, whatever your normal offerings are. One of my favorite uses for the cauldron is to use it sort of as a storage space. So since mine does have a lid, I can kind of put things in there, close it up and hide it away. But that makes it especially effective for charging and blessing items. Since it has that amplification energy, I can place some sand down in there and maybe put crystals in there in a certain pattern and then I can charge those under the sun or moonlight and I'm amplifying even more the intention that I'm already trying to put into those. And likewise, they make great money or wish bowls because again, you're amplifying everything that you're putting in there. So you can put again, some sand in there and bury uh, like a coin if you're using it as a money bowl and bury that in there because you are encouraging that to grow and to amplify. But I did want to talk specifically about two of my favorite uses, specifically during Samhain season. So first of all is to use Vesta powder or charging powder. Uh, if you have ever seen sort of a, like a spark come up in a cauldron, that is what people are using. Vesta powder is a white powder. It's very flammable. So you want to keep it, you know, stored in a cool, dry place and be very careful with it. And you need just a little bit, like a half a teaspoon, and you can put a tea light uh, down in your cauldron and drop that half teaspoon in it there and it shoots up. So all of the disclaimers here about practicing fire safety, but Vesta powder is so great for instantly banishing negative energy. So if you're looking to quickly cleanse a space, get anything negative out of there, just a quick shot of Vesta powder is going to ignite and send everything out of that space. And it likewise can be a very powerful last step in a spell to again, amplify that energy and send it off into the universe. So when you see it, you can really feel the power coming off of that. And naturally I'm going to show you. So let's take a look. As you can see, I've been playing around in my cauldron and I've got the Vesta powder in there and then we're gonna use a long match and we're gonna light it. And lastly, cauldrons are a great place to brew potions. 
People don't often think about putting liquids into their cauldron because they don't want it to rust, but all you need to know is proper cauldron care because usually they are cast iron and cast iron can rust if you leave it wet. So you do not want to, to do that. So let's get into how to brew a potion. First and foremost, have separate cauldrons if you are going to consume your potion. So if there's anything that you are going to be putting into your body, you want it to be completely separate from the cauldron that you are using, questionable ingredients in, Vesta powder being one of them. Those need to be separate spaces. To make a potion, you're basically making an infusion or a tea. You want to set your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit because that is what a cast iron cauldron is. It's oven safe, it can go over a flame, that's the benefit. You want to add your water, usually sun or moon water, that corresponds to your specific intention, into your cauldron, and then you can add your herbs. Whatever ingredients correspond with your specific intention. And then place it into your heated oven for 15 minutes. Once it's cooled, you can bottle that potion. It's a great way to get all of the elements in there, and really spend time with it and get all of those ingredients to infuse in there. And again, use that amplification energy to make it even more potent. And then you can use that potion for any number of things. Using it in a bath is very popular. It would be you know, very diluted then, but again, if you that is sort of like consuming it, if it's gonna be touching your skin, you should have a separate cauldron from what you do your other workings in and you should be using all safe ingredients. You can use it as a foot soak or a rinse in the shower. You can turn it into a room spray for general use in spells, anointing candles, or you can create a cleansing version for your home. So if you are like me where you don't like to use smoke and incense to cleanse your home, you can use water, in which case you can make a potion like this for cleansing and for your specific intentions that you'd like for your home. And then you would take one of those mini besoms and dip that into the water and sort of flick that around your space to give it a good cleanse and set a new energy. And like I said, oven is not the only option. You can use it like over a gas stove top and like over that flame, that would just take a little longer or even over a fire pit outside. To ensure that your cast iron cauldron does not rust, you want to rinse it out thoroughly, all of the ingredients that were in there, dry it, and then bake it in an oven for 400, at 400 degrees for one hour and that will completely dry it out so it doesn't get any rust in it. And that is cauldron magic. Let me know if you are planning on using your cauldron this Samhain season. If you've ever brewed a potion in it, let me know if you are willing to try that or if you've ever used the charging powder, Vesta powder, or if that is a completely new ingredient to you. I would love to know. That's everything for Vlogtober day 26. I will see you tomorrow.